Bueno. Buenos dias, senor. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to keep this as short as possible. We'll be grateful for that. I wanted to... I'm going to do this in English because I only speak a little bit of uh, Spanish, but as going to do part of this in Spanish, and if I can't do it, then I'll ask for your translation into Spanish. We're talking about treatment prior to dumping. What I'd like to do is explain what happened in Germany. Incineration in Germany, right now at the moment, is the normal system that we use. Any rubbish that has 5% or more of organic matter is banned from tipping since 2005. Pyrolysis and plasma are not very important in Germany. So there's a landfill ban, but you may ask why. We've set up a standard, the best standards, so that we have double systems in our landfills, double impermeabilizations, where we recover the biogas and we treat the water with ultra osmosis. But it's not perfect at the moment because we do not recover the resources and the landfills are still too big because when the waste is dumped, there's methane emissions that come out of there, and we don't know how long these impermeabilization systems are going to last. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's very complicated to pronounce this in Spanish. Apart from that, a well-constructed landfill costs about 120 euros a tonne in Germany, which is more expensive than an incineration process and more expensive than a pretreatment system. So why should we dump? It doesn't make sense. That's why banning dumping has saved us a lot in emissions because the emissions from landfills. And then as we have a lot of organic matter in the waste, we've replaced the emissions of CO2 with, uh, with fossil material. Looking back, we can see the developments of the different treatment system, incineration, poor standard, poor quality incineration, we had 46 plants back in 1984. Now we have 72, or this was back in 2007, but also in 2016, with the fantastic emission standards. The deficit of energy recovery, so the performance of the, in the energy, it's not quite as efficient as we would like it to be. Pyrolysis, we don't have any more. We have a lot of sorting plants prior to incineration or just to recover a material for recycling. And in the landfills, we have approximately 120 odd landfills that we need for non-organic matter. So when we close a landfill, you have to keep the site to use it for other purposes, for waste with very low, with a very low organic matter content. This collection system hasn't changed for years. The interesting point, if you look at the left, you have biomass, which is selectively collected, and this is compulsory in Germany, or the whole country, as of this year, this is compulsory for everybody. We sort paper and glass. This, is, this goes back for years. We've been doing this for 30 years. So there's not a lot more to do with the packaging system. But this always worked. But it's now been integrated in the packaging system. 
And here we talk about packaging the yellow bin, the yellow system, and then the rest of it. The interesting thing is this yellow part of the system. It's not an official system. This is a private system. And it has been in Germany ever since, between 1991 right the way up to 1998, there was no official tenders. So this was very, it, it was interesting because it was a monopoly in order for earning money. And the company earned a fortune in this. We no longer have a monopoly. We have an oligopoly, oligopoly as according to the press. So it's still an interesting system. There are about 12 companies that run it. So now when we say that waste treatment is cheaper because there's less material to be treated, this is because of the packaging system that we have. Because people pay in a different way. They don't pay for the, the waste treatment process. They pay when they buy their products so they don't notice what they're paying. But that's not my uh, area. That's not my field. So after these, these selective collection systems, in Germany, we still have a composition of solid waste, as we can see here, with biomass. With paper is still um, biomass, and it still accounts for 55% of the waste. And this is interesting. People in Germany produce some 120 kilos of organic matter that we collect in a selected manner. But there still leaves 55% of biomass. Plastics is 15%, metal up to 4%. Normally, it's a little bit lower than this. But the interesting thing here is if we look at the biomass, we now talk about this composition and the value of this waste. The highest value is the biomass. This is a resource. In other systems, we were tr deliberately trying to create agricultural bio biomass in order to recover renewable energies. But we've got it here, and it's free. And we're just dumping this into the landfill, and it produces methane, which pollutes the air. And I think this is an interesting point. So biomass can, has a high potential for emitting CO2. The water content is not good for the landfill if it's a high percentage of water content. But it's also difficult for incineration plants. Moving on to incineration plants now. These plants need a calorific value that is fairly high in order to work. If we take out all the plastic from the waste, all the rest doesn't burn quite as well. And in some areas and in some countries, you cannot set up a good incineration system. So the homework that we still need to do for pretreatment, for instance, point one, to improve the material before dumping it, or we separate or sort some products such as the light fraction, plastics, metals, and many others. But, sorry. If we separate, separating the metal is not the metal is not a very efficient process because very often the metal is dirty, and it's quite difficult to sort and separate the metal. All of this is interesting. If the price of oil is high, but now there's been a significant change in the interest in. Uh, recycling plastic, for instance, because all of this depends on the price of oil. 
back in the day, it reached 143 barrel a dollars a barrel, and the minimum price is about 30, and I think it's currently at 54. If oil prices are low, then plastic recycling is not so interesting, clearly. So if we want to separate or sort out the plastic, the tools for has to come from the state who forces us to separate the plastic if the market cannot provide economic efficiency for the process. At the top of this, we can see how the waste arrives. But we can recycle almost all of this waste, starting with water on the left. We've seen this in several different plants that will remove the water from the solid waste. They clean it using ultrafiltration or ultraosmosis. And this water can be used for um, technical processes, for instance. Then we have other com interesting components, such as dry matter, refuse derived fuel, RDF. This is quite an interesting material for industry. We have a lot of industrial plants that use RDF as their fuel. This could be interesting for the, for the fuel, for the island, sorry. Producing it at sufficient quality and then you can transport it elsewhere where it could be used as fuel. This is a, um, a dry stablet with maximum moisture of 15%. This way it can be packed and used elsewhere. We can also separate plastic. It's, it's easy to prepare 10 different qualities of plastics from waste. But what must be said is that the drier the waste, the easier it is to sort the, to separate the plastic stream or fraction. So the way the dryness of the waste will depend on how it's collected. In Germany, for instance, we have a dry container and another container for damp waste. So the dry waste is easier to separate technically and we can get quite good quality and quite good purity. But once the plastic is in the waste bin, it does pick up the smell of the rest of the waste. So if we're doing plastic to plastic, you can notice the smell of the, the product, of the previous product. So if there was fish in the, in the waste, then the plastic smells of fish. Metals, we can separate magnetic and non-magnetic, i.e. ferrous and non-ferrous metals. Very few pretreatment plants are separating the non-ferrous metals, but it is possible and it is done on, can be done on a very efficient scale if you do it on a large scale. We can also separate out the glass from the waste. We can either have white, brown, green, whatever we want to do. And we can do it to the purity that we like, up to 99%. All of this is possible if we want to do it. Obviously, the important, the decisive factor is who's going to pay for it. We can recycle it. We've seen this on a large scale. We can recycle stones. We can separate out stones. We can wash them. And you can use this stone in construction work. And we can also recycle the water, as I said before, and it can later be used for industrial processes. Preliminary treatment before dumping for non-sorted waste, all of these need individual solutions. So on an you can't do the same thing on a small island as you can in a large city. So you can't say, well, this is the solution for your problem. 
all of this will depend. The technology does exist. We can do whatever we want with infrared and other forms. Today's computers are far more efficient than the uh, computer that's from 15 years ago. So from a technical point of view, we have no problem. The problem is, is where does it go? And here, the dry matter, the RDF, the re residue-derived fuel, usually goes to RDF power plants. These are special plants that only run on RDF. These are used for industrial processes. 10% goes to co-combustion in coal-fired plants. Some is used for making cement and other plants. Talking about other fractions, the most thing that's, uh, that's recycled is the ferrous metal. But ferrous metal, the prices are low because the quality is also low. So it's more efficient to separate this, this metal from the ash than from incinerating process. It's more efficient and it's cheaper. So solutions. As I said before, we need individual designs for individual solutions rather than one size fits all. We wouldn't recommend that. Here we can see the, the seatment on the ground. Right now in Germany, we have 44 pretreatment plants dealing with 5.2 million tons. But if the incineration process in some parts of Germany costs 50 euros and pretreatment costs is more expensive, then the future of pretreatment uh, pre is uncertain. So we really don't know whether pretreatment has a future or whether it's going to be important in the future. Waste is always going to go to the cheapest place. It's highly volatile, so we really don't know what's going to happen. It will depend very much on politics and politicians. The, the framework which will determine our options so the future here in the Canary Islands, I saw now that the future in the Canary Islands is moving towards zero waste. And zero waste seems to be the, a good track to go. And that's why we need to go. So thank you very much. 18 minutes.